Greetings aspiring big game hunters, I am Commander Tyriel, welcome to the channel. Playing a torpedo boat in War Thunder is one of the most rewarding experiences that you can have in terms of fun, especially while playing these vessels to specifically target blue water ships. You will experience time to formulate a plan, moments of calm, the thrill of hunting something way more powerful than yourself, heart stopping adrenaline as you press the attack and feelings of pure joy when your plan falls into place all in one game. This mission is not for the faint of heart and real world statistics tell us that torpedo boats really did fight against the odds. It took a lot of bravery, daring, determination and a small dose of crazy to pull off these missions. All in the hopes that they could destroy something more valuable to the enemy than themselves. In this video I will teach you the basics of torpedo lineup selection, how to choose the right boat for this mission and how to recognize what a boat is and isn't capable of. I'll teach you the easiest way to find a battle with your desired target and some of my tactics for sinking tonnage with the torpedoes and other ships coastal weapons. While this video is aimed at seasons battle pass task big game hunter in which you must sink 10 targets with a coastal torpedo. You will be able to use this video for other challenges as well as general gameplay. Just remember your mission is not to survive. Your mission is to sink the enemy no matter the cost. Before we get started make sure you're subbed to the channel and go down below and torpedo that like button. What makes a good torpedo boat? There are many tactics that can be used to hunt a blue water ship. These are defined by the capabilities of the vessel as well as the range, speed and power of the torpedo fitted. The main factors to consider when selecting a boat are as follows. Top speed of the boat, the faster the better as this allows you to get to places that are unexpected to perform ambushes. It makes you harder to hit and reduces your closure time during an attack run. It also allows you to pursue faster foes and attack from astern. The size of the vessel, a low silhouette makes you harder to detect, harder to hit and allows you to get under the enemy's guns. You can also hide in very small nooks or amongst the landscape. Size can also affect sea keeping in rough waves with larger boats generally having increased stability. The main armament. Some vessels have high powered main or secondary weapons as well as systems that increase survivability. If a vessel has high powered main guns or secondaries it can afford to be more aggressive in attack runs, disabling turrets, AA guns, bridges and is able to defend itself against competing coastal boats. It may have a radar to help defend against air attacks or it may have powerful secondaries such as rockets, depth charges and sea mines. Finally the biggest factor to consider is the torpedo itself. The amount of launches and the reloads if any will determine how many targets can be engaged before reloading. With more always being better keep in mind that all torpedoes can be detonated by gunfire while on the boat. Its range will determine your maximum engagement distance. A long range will allow you to attack from outside detection radius and also makes you much harder to hit. Its speed will determine how easy the torpedo is to dodge once detected and how long it will take to reach the target. A slow torpedo is not useless and can be useful in certain situations. The explosive mass determines how much raw damage is caused and determines the maximum class of the target. Some larger ships have torpedo defense and many compartments. Light torpedoes are ineffective against these defenses and will show little result. A torpedo with more than 300 kilos of TNT mass can be considered strong enough to defeat most torpedo defenses, although more is always better. On coastal boats warhead size can range from as little as 45 kilos up to a whopping 915 kilos on the American Mark 16. Some boats have torpedo mode modification which when fitted slows the speed of the fish to increase its range. Depending on the torpedo this can be useful or a curse, always check that this is correct for your needs. Torpedo depth can be set in realistic battles to either 1 meter or 4 meters. This is chosen on the deployment screen when selecting your vessel in battle. 4 meter depth provides the most damage as it detonates well below the waterline, often able to detonate a magazine store or completely destroy an engine room causing fire and flooding. They are also harder to detect by other players and don't give a torpedo warning until it's often too late. However a ship with low draft will be able to sail safely over the top without harm. They are still visible to the naked eye but a player must actively search for them. This depth setting should be used against most destroyers and all larger warship classes. 
One meter torpedoes can be spotted by the crew and the player from a fair distance and give a warning depending on the crew level. It does less damage, however all vessels will be damaged or destroyed, boats included. There are quite a few boats from all nations that tick all the boxes when we apply the factors that we've just discussed. There are even a few reserve tier boats with fearsome reputations such as the Soviet G5 and the German LS3. However, most naval daily tasks, event challenges and battle pass quests such as Big Game Hunt require a rank 3 vessel as their base. So let's have a look at a few of the boats from each nation and see what we can use. The US Coastal Tree has a large selection of World War II era PT boats at rank 3 which are powerfully armed for their weight, have 4 torpedoes and are fairly fast with relatively agile steering. They are made of a wooden construction and they tend to roll and pitch a lot in heavy seas. Of the PT boats, the so called Devil Boats or the Mark 7 rocket armed boats are the most effective, able to project a lot of firepower to soften up a target before a torpedo. This class is somewhat limited by the low quality Mark 13 torpedo, which is slow but has a serviceable amount of TNT. If you have access to the PT-810 or the PT-811, then these should be used due to their very fast speed and insanely powerful 900 kilo warhead torpedo. Germany has a range of options from World War II era Schnell boats to Cold War era Soviet and NATO attack boats, having the best of both worlds so to speak. Their World War II era boats carry the venerable and reliable G7A which has a great speed of 81 kilometers, decent range and 350 kilos of TNT. With torpedo mode it is able to attack out to 14 kilometers at 54 kilometers an hour. World War II boats, the S100, the VS10 and this season's battle pass reward the S701 are fitted with this fish. The V990 or Project 131 is a Cold War era fast attack boat fitted with the 5365 Soviet torpedo with an amazing speed of 126 km an hour and 300 kilos of TNT. It has a great range and this boat carries two which are dropped from the rear and thus harder to detect. These are very good as a sniper torpedo. Germany also has access to the Project 206 which is a worthy reward for top tier, extremely potent weapon systems allowing you to step up the aggression, but this is a very large boat and it shows. The Feel is a newer boat which I don't own and is fitted with a British Mark 8 torpedo with great speed, decent TNT and a low range. The Soviet Coastal Tree has arguably the best coastal vessels in the game and their torpedo boats are no exception. However, there is only one boat at rank 3 and one boat at rank 4 and then all the others are at rank 5. But that's okay, because if you really want an easy boat to practice this mission set in, then the Project 123K is all you really need. It's extremely fast, hard to hit, very agile and has two torpedoes and depth charges. The single gun is decent for self-defense and fairly accurate. This boat would be perfect except for its torpedo is fairly small at 200 kilos so it's wise to use both on a single destroyer. This boat will struggle to fight higher than 5.0, but it will be an absolute nuisance. The following Project 183 is equally good trading speed for a double 25mm cannons, two 300 kilo torpedoes and depth charges. Mastering these two boats will reward you with even better versions for fighting the same aggressive doctrine, the Project 206 and the Project 206M armed with a 57mm cannon. You could also use any of the Soviet corvettes or frigates from rank 5 if you have them, but their torpedoes are fairly useless, very low TNT mass and or hard to get them into position to fire. The British I would consider to be the weakest nation for blue water hunting due to the shortage of torpedo armed boats, low top speed, poor sea keeping, poor average torpedoes with low survivability, all boats have the Mark 8 which was mentioned before as being below average torpedo, so generally I don't like the British and I'm yet to find something that I like. I would use the Dark Aggressor or the Battle Pass MTB422. The Brave Borderer also looks like it could be a contender, but it still is limited by the Mark 8 torpedoes. Let me know what you think about the British. Your opinions may be different to mine. 
The Japanese almost made last on the list because of their Type 51 torpedo boats, which have an absolutely terrible torpedo in my opinion. It has decent TNT, but the range of 3 kilometers on such a slow launch platform, it is murderous. Only take this on if you feel like a challenge. The entire tree, however, is redeemed by the PT-15. The PT-15 is a post-war era PT boat with amazing post-war torpedoes. It previously had the Mark 16 American torpedoes, but it now has a different set, which travel at 120 km per hour and are excellent for hitting close-range destroyers and cruisers, which would never get out of the way in time. If you're feeling lucky, you could try it in Chikugo, which has 85 kilo torpedoes and is a corvette, so is much more survivable, but I wouldn't try and focus that as your main task. Italy have some decent launch platforms, but they are let down by terrible torpedoes. The W200 torpedo is consistent across all of the boats, and it only has 200 kilos of TNT and 3 kilometer range. No torpedo mode to speak of, that's what you got. You got to get in their face and you got to hope that it's enough to get through. The Italian boats are not very good at fighting cruisers, so you're relegated to only fighting destroyers. So after watching that, go below and tell me what your favorite boat is out of all of the nations. Also, make sure to hit the like button because we have plenty more to go and I need some inspiration. Okay, so after going through all of the boats, you may have realized that they are all fairly low ranked. Low rank 2.3, 2.7, you know, 3.0 pushing it, and the top tier boats are 4.3. Now, if we want to fight destroyers and hunt blue water ships, we need to up tier ourselves to their battle rating. If we play these boats at their current battle rating, they will be hardly seen. We may get up to four destroyers in a battle in a full up tier. So I've gone through every single nation and I've built a lineup and the highest ranked ship is the blue water ship battle rating that I'm hunting. So if you're feeling confident, you can put a high rank ship in there or if you're not, put a reserve tier destroyer. This will push you up to reserve tier destroyer levels and that's the only boats you'll fight. Keep in mind that if you're up tiering yourself, you might find top tier coastal boats. So your main priority is to stay silent, stay stealthy, and only show yourself to your intended target moments before he perishes. I have no intention of using the blue water ship that's in my lineup. It's simply there to set the battle rating. If you really want to, you could put a 7.0 there and go straight to fight battleships. And I do that quite often without ever spawning in a battleship. My mission, just to make battleship players have to pay a lot of money. Now, let's get into some tactics and I'll show you how to really do things. A tried and true method is the corner camp where you sit in a place where you're expecting lots of ships to come past and you just absolutely fill them with torpedoes. It doesn't really matter how good your torpedoes are because the surprise negates all of the downsides of any poor torpedoes. The only thing that really matters for this tactic is a fast boat to get to places first and enough weaponry to defend yourself from coastal boats. Maps with short distances between Alpha and Bravo points and maps with lots of hard cover are perfect for this tactic. If you have high powered weaponry, you can also be more aggressive and actively target ship modules to take them out piece by piece. The Soviet Project 206 is really the epitome of this role as it has the firepower needed to pull out an enemy's teeth as well as the torpedoes to really destroy them. They don't have the highest amount of TNT filler but you're able to really destroy your enemy before you even get close to finish them off with a torpedo. Surprise and enough speed to get close and enough firepower to finish off your enemy is what you need for this tactic. Another example of the corner cap is when you lurk from place to place. You use the hard cover to stick your nose out and see if there's anything coming before making your dash. This is a very methodical method of play. And some sections of some maps are excellent for this. As you can see from this clip, I have an entire fleet heading towards my position. 
I'm sitting here and I'm reading the tra tracer fire and seeing what's happening. It does require some patience and a lot of attention. When I feel like the enemy has had their attention diverted for long enough, or maybe forgotten about me if they did spot something, then I plan on making my dash. Those tracers are getting nice and close now, so I'm starting to believe there's a ship right there, and as in the corner of my screen, I can see a ship. That is my target, and I'm going to run out, torpedo him, and then dash into cover. I'll also take any targets of opportunity that I may see in the background. We take a reverse here to give us ample room to run up our speed to maximum speed. We hit flank ahead and now our attack is proceeding. That enemy destroyer is taking fire so he'll probably be damaged. And he's just been destroyed but that's okay because we have targets of opportunity as we make our dash to the next alcove. I fire a torpedo at his lead indicator and another one where I think he may go if he sees the first torpedo. This makes it almost unavoidable. Ships have about a four or five second reaction time between changing their engine modes. If he stays on course, he'll get hit. If he changes course, he'll get hit. Offering the perfect dilemma. And we have success. We've waited a few more minutes. Hopefully they've forgotten about our presence. And again, I can see two ships coming this time. Not quite long enough to make an identification, but we have targeted the lead ship. We're going to take a reversing shot here to move into cover. As the first fish heads away, I am confident that that is on a good path. We'll flank ahead and then break to see what else is coming around the corner. I can see that the ship that we've targeted is a Peacock class. He doesn't seem to be making any adjustments and in the meantime I'm going to target the ship behind. We'll hit full back to give us some rudder control, enough to aim the torpedo and then fire it away, hitting flank ahead again to stop the boat. We've had contact with our first fish on the Peacock. Unfortunately, that is a coastal vessel, so it doesn't count towards our goal. But this German destroyer does, and he's well engaged with one of my allies in the alcove around the corner. Now, if this guy sees us, we will get hosed down, but it is almost too late for him to avoid this torpedo now. It should hit center of mass, exactly where we aimed it. And those Mark 16s make short work of anything they come in contact with. I've been asked a few times how to use the VS-10 because it is a little bit funny for a hydrofoil. It's extremely fast, but it handles a little bit funny and it only has two torpedoes that fire extreme angles. But it's fast enough to get underneath a Cleveland or a Helena before they can react. And if you hit them in the magazine, they'll destroy it instantly. Another tactic that is quite useful is coast riding, where you hug terrain as much as you possibly can to skirt around to the outsides of the fleet formation. Using a boat like the PT-15 with such powerfully fast torpedoes, you're able to really inflict damage to large warships. Sometimes before they can even react, and other times before they can move. Like they may take you out, but it's too late because this Bayer boy is coming at you at 120 kilometers an hour, running at four meters, and it's got 300 kilos of TNT to put right into your magazine. Are you impressed? Well, you're about to be, because this torpedo is absolutely amazing and I've had some fantastic luck with it. Even Mr. Scharnhorst here will soon learn the power of the PT-15 torpedo. I swear that the travel speed has something to do with it. I really, really do. And thus my crew has fallen, but I've managed to take out the pride of the German fleet, both the Admiral Hipper and now the Scharnhorst. Straight into his magazine, Boomski. 
Now we're using PT658, another excellent coast rider, especially when you use the camouflage. PT658 was a battle pass vehicle, but you could also use PT200, which has green paint as well. I've had an extreme amount of luck hiding in this boat, and it is one of my favorite coastal boats. Although the torpedoes can sometimes be woefully underwhelming. And so we try to get his crew levels down to under 5%, which makes it hard for him to fix that flooding. I was hoping to finalize him with that, but I'm going to actually launch a second torpedo. The 180 kilos, you do really feel it sometimes. It just doesn't have that oomph that you need. And so when using an American PT boat, I suggest using all your torpedoes when you attack a target. PT boats can generally afford to move around a lot. They have a lot of firepower and they are good at suppressing other coastals. Don't underestimate the power of artillery. Using a coastal boat's artillery system, you can call in a powerful barrage, which will assist you in a torpedo run. With enough practice, you should be able to call in an artillery just ahead of any warship and do significant amount of damage, which is often enough to get you through their defenses and straight into their magazines. This cruiser's secondary battery has opened fire on us, but he's just taken a hit from artillery. He's seen the torpedo and he's now avoiding it. We shoot one across his path, forcing him to stop, and then we fire another one at the ship. It's almost unmissable. Always aim two torpedoes at two different vectors and you should have good luck. If you're attacking a warship on the move without cover, it's always best to attack from ahead. This increases the closure rate and limits their ability to bring their weapons to bear. A faster torpedo will serve you better in these cases. When selecting your target, always try to choose someone that is facing a different direction or is engaged with other targets. This drastically increases your chance of survival and you may not even be seen. When making a high speed attack run in a torpedo boat, try to come in at an extreme angle to force the enemy gunners to have to traverse very fast. If you aim for the bow of a ship, you should have a little bit more time to get in front of his guns and defeat the traverse. Sometimes this works and other times it doesn't. A ship that's already suffering from flooding damage like this Helena is perfect target for a torpedo strike as she is lifting her skirt or bringing her magazines higher to the level of the waterline. So if we combine attacking from ahead, using secondaries and aggression, I can show you how effective a devil boat can be. The five inch rockets hit extremely hard and a solid barrage can cripple a ship for up to 30 seconds, which is enough to spread four torpedoes across her path. Because she is maneuvering wildly, I'm just dumping all of my torpedoes because Motor Torpedo Doctrine states that you should use any and all weapons when forcing an attack. So there you have it. That is my starter guide to Torpedo Boat Doctrine and how to succeed when hunting the big fish. Now I haven't told you all of my secrets and I plan to keep a few of them for the old playbook, but this should give you enough of a head start to really start dominating the waves of War Thunder and make these challenges a fickle thing that you can spend an hour every few days and just absolutely knock them out of the ballpark. Naval is honestly one of the easiest ways to grind events and daily tasks and I suggest that you get good and learn a little bit. If you're a new player, I suggest you go through my catalog and have a look at the other videos more specific to each of the vehicles that we've listed here today. If you're an experienced player, or a veteran of my channel, I do thank you once again for watching my stuff and I'll see you next time. Commanderterial, out.